Lincoln, you wanna say hi? You, just, you annoyed? You, you don't feel like doing this right now? Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, tropical put. Toby, let's go outdoors. Jeff here, tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great, considering, you know. It's mid-April, which means it's time for a garden tour. Say hi, say hello. I had intended on getting this done much sooner, but I didn't, so here we are. I would like for the garden tours to come out like the first week or so of the month, so the next one will only be like a two, two and a half week difference between this one. But it, I think it's fun to go through and be able to see the differences and everything from this time of year and onward. So let's do that. There aren't a ton of drastic changes out here since the last garden tour, but there are some little things. I thought it might be fun to go through and discuss some of my plans or more like aspirations, really, for the garden this year. It, you know, everything's kind of up in the air, but yeah, you get it. Garden tour time. We can start down here with the ostrich ferns. They're unfurling and looking absolutely beautiful. Uh, things are still burned up kind of high over here. There's a ginger under here. It's the flaming torch. I believe, yeah, Hedichium Flaming Torch, but it's just still a little bit cool to be lifting that mulch off. I'll talk about that more in just a minute when I get down to the banana berms. You can see they're looking good. Not a lot to report there other than they're just pretty. That's going to be kind of the theme with a lot of stuff out here. Do you like my palm tree holder? It's just the wind just kept blowing these guys right over. It is a bit blustery today, so hopefully that won't interfere with the audio too terribly much. We have been having some cold nights. So in areas back here with the Tropicanas that are coming up from uh, last year and the year before, these have been in the ground for a fairly long time, well, like three years. There's just a little bit of cold damage here on this leaf, but that's not that big of a deal. As long as they aren't really big, robust plants when these random freezes come in and get things, they're usually okay. Just to be safe, I have been taking this pot here when it's been getting really cold and tipping that over the top of them just to protect them a little bit more, which is something I was originally doing in the past with this needle palm that's over here, but it just hasn't been cold enough. This winter, I didn't have to do anything with this needle palm. And so there's a little bit of foliar burn, but it's really not bad considering this hasn't been protected at all. And this was just a little seedling when I planted this many, many, many years ago. It was just like a little stick basically with a few strap leaves on it and uh, this year or really last summer it's just started to put out mature fronds these things grow like snails so it's going to be a long time until this is a nice impressive clumping bush form palm but it'll be pretty someday when it gets there i have some bigger ones i can show you when i get down to that side of the yard of what those will look like over here the crinum lilies those have been coming up very very strong for like the last month they didn't make it into the last garden tour because i didn't even notice that they were coming up until like right after i'd finished filming it but at that point they were just little nubs they weren't doing much there's still not a lot to see here with them you can kind of see how they come up out of the ground down here let me get out of the light see this through the ginger and bamboo pieces that i've left over here there's a nub right here and so what happens is it's kind of like they keep this on all winter long and then uh, when the new growth comes up it pushes this off it's like a little cap really shouldn't do it myself but that will come off and then uh, the new growth is inside of there see that so that will start to grow and pop open and you can pull that rotting stuff off of there hit it with a fungicide if you're worried about it these plants crinomalies are so tough that that's not something I've ever really been worried about, but you can still kind of see the remnants of some of that stuff that gets left on there. That'll all pop out and flush out, and it'll look fine. Bird of Paradise are still over here hardening off, and really, they're protected from the wind, but it has been so gusty that it's still been kind of knocking them over a little bit. For the most part, they seem to be safe from the cold here. It's like a nice little warm pocket for them, so I'm not going to move them in, because it's only supposed to drop into like the mid to upper 30s for a few days, and then it's supposed to get back to more normal spring temperatures. So I think they're fine for right now. And over here, the Ponceris. This is the Ponceris trifoliate flying dragon is the name of this one. Has really cool twisty foliage. And it's just started putting out its spring blooms right around the same time that the cold has decided to kind of come in here and mess things up a little bit. It smells fantastic. It's a, the full name, it's a Japanese, the common name, Japanese better orange on this one. And the, fruit i mean it's edible but it doesn't taste very good 
but the smell from the flowers is just like any other citrus. They're already into zone six and they have teeny tiny little like, I'd say ping pong to golf ball size orange fruit on them throughout mm, pretty much fall through winter. They'll hold on to those. The wind blew them all off last year, but in a few weeks, all these little white flowers will go ahead and start to turn into little tiny green fruit. And they just don't get their orange color though until very late summer into the fall, but it's still a pretty plant. They do lose their foliage during the winter time but their wood is so interesting. It's all spirally and twisty with these very extremely large and dangerous thorns on them. So it's not something to plant where there's a lot of traffic. That doesn't matter. This isn't a care video. It's going into flower. It has some buds on there. Not ideal timing considering how cool it is at nighttime, but that's all right. Still getting to enjoy that nice, lovely, spicy citrus fragrance that's wafting through the yard while it's in bloom. It's not blooming as heavily as it has in the past, but I think that's just because the weather has been all over the place. And this entire thing was covered in buds a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago, but it's just the wind. It took a lot of those buds off. That happens sometimes. There have been years where this has gone into absolute, like just full flower you have a bad storm and it blows them all off and don't even get any fruit from it. So hopefully that won't be the case this year just because the fruit are kind of fun to look at and they're pretty. I don't really, you can make them into like a preserve, like a marmalade and I hear there's like teas and things and drinks people make out of them. I just enjoy them because it's pretty. I like seeing the little orange fruits on there during the winter time. <laughs> and the bananas, they, um, they're really, they're much bigger than they usually are this time of year. It was so warm during March. These started coming up. I think they were popping up in the last garden tour. And this is what's happened since then. I haven't pulled the mulch off yet, which when they get this big starts to become a little bit risky just because fungus and bacteria and stuff can start to build up in there if there's a lot of moisture. But we only had a few days of extreme heat and then it's cooled back down. Like I said, we're, it's, I think the low tonight's like 35. So I don't see a reason to pull the mulch off yet, but in like two or three days, it should be safe to go ahead and pull that back and finally free them. They're probably really sick and tired of being covered up like this, but it's just it's not worth the risk that's gonna be a big trunk on this one right here because it doesn't even, it hasn't even leafed out yet and it's already probably four and a half feet tall so might even get some fruit out of it this year i think i talked about that in the last tour it won't be edible i mean you could eat it it's not going to taste good but it's still fun to look at and it's pretty and then i did notice this morning jumping around very quickly here you see that look at it can you see it i can't see it because the sun's totally blocking my viewfinder here there's just a little ginger coming up a little bit earlier i don't usually expect these to come up until like ugh, mid may somewhere around there early to mid may so i'm surprised to be seeing a ginger shoot up there i thought maybe it was a banana and i went over and i rubbed it and sniffed my fingers definitely a ginger it smells gingery over here we have a lovely juniper that's now just kind of become a holder for my rakes and things that's going to get cut out it hasn't done well here i think it's just way too windy and blustery right here i think the wind comes through these hills up here and just blows right through this little spot and it just burns them out i could cover them I don't need something that's that much maintenance over here. You can see how much I care about it with all the stuff that's piled on it. I'm also slightly allergic to juniper, so it's not a plant that I want to be messing with very much. It makes me itch and my skin burns for a few days, so that's going to go. And this is probably the area where I plan on putting the banana cannas that I showed in one of my plant hauls not too long ago. It, that I think will just look a lot better right here up against this fence. They'll come up nice and tall. They'll have a nice kind of a reddish burgundy backdrop to the green of the bananas that are over here. The foliage will be kind of a similar shape, but that's okay. And they're perennial and being planted close to the driveway and the pathways that are over here, that'll help keep them going through winter a little bit longer because they're like tender perennials here. You have to plant them in the right spot. I'm in zone 6A, 6B, kind of right on the line. But I think that that will look nice here. I had thought about doing bamboo on each side of the fence, but it's just, I can't find it. I haven't been able to source it from somebody who will get it to me in a really big size. And uh, I don't have the patience. I don't feel like waiting. So I'm probably not going to go that route, at least not for having something on each side of this pathway right here. Cause that was the plan to have bamboo on each side, but uh, I don't see myself doing that anymore. You know you're impatient when bamboo doesn't grow fast enough for you. Tucker, why do you always go right for the crotch when I get you on camera? Right here, look at this beautiful Brandywine Viburnum. This is doing wonderfully. It's getting ready to flower, which I don't think is in focus. There you go, it's just buds. But doesn't this have beautiful foliage? Really nice glossy foliage, and it has more of an upright vase shape to it. So this is going to probably, it's been doing well actually in the part shade. So with its size, so only get about five 
five to six feet tall and wide. So I was thinking I actually may put it back here in this little corner, provide a little bit more privacy. I don't know. I don't, I have a thing about corners. I like corners to have something in them. It'd be nice to have something there with a little bit of mulch around it, maybe some little perennials. I had toyed around, I'm not doing this. This is just, we're just talking about things for fun right now. But I had toyed around with the idea of doing a, a hedge of some sort all the way up and along this fence line and then having that kind of come down from up here in this corner and then swoop around the base of that oak that's up here and reconnect back down here onto this berm and doing that with like alternating tall plants I'm, you know a garden bed basically but a very narrow one i don't see that happening uh, you know because the availability of plants things are very different this year and that's a really big project and the ground over here is cement it is rock hard and uh, this is drainage right here, which has been filled with mud from all the rain and storms. All these houses up on this hill come drain down here and then go into here. There's a little storm sewer here that carries everything underground, under the pool and everything, to an actual storm sewer that's on the other side of the yard. So things would have to be done very methodically. Uh, but there is still this big hole up here where there was a white pine that got blown over during a storm last spring. So uh, that was just kind of my thinking with the viburnum like I was just talking about would be to replant something up there that's not going to get as big because that's not practical with this big oak tree here, which I'm seeing needs a heavy pruning. It has gall wasps. That's, that's a whole, whole nother thing. That would be a whole different video to talk about. But getting something up there that's evergreen and then having a few other points of evergreens along the fence in this corner leading up with some smaller shrubs in the front, maybe some hookahs, something like that. I think that that would be a lot of fun and look really cool, especially with having things kind of swoop down around this oak and over. But again, it's not really practical this year because there's just, you know, the, you know what's going on. The whole idea there is that eventually all of these pedicets, the pedicets japonicus variegatus, that's what these are right here, these would be flowing all the way up this hill and then up into there and it would look just so pretty. These are heavy spreaders. You can even see over here, I'm trying not to trip over a pot that's in front of me. You can see where they've already started to kind of move up the hill. And I planted these, I only planted I think six of these, two different varieties, maybe three different varieties all over here. So there were like the Gigantia, Gigantus, Actually, I think they changed the name to like Curly Q or something, but that's what it used to be called. Then the Variegatus all the way throughout here. And look at what they've done. This is a drastic change since the last garden tour. These will eventually fill in the base of this berm all the way through with just these fun, big shaped, variegated leaves. They're great for reflecting the light. They're gorgeous back here. They come up early spring. Sometimes they struggle a little bit during the extreme heat of summertime, but since this area over here is pretty shady come midsummer, I think that that won't be an it well it won't be an issue. I've had them in the ground for about four or five years and this is how much they've spread. They've been okay, but like I said, they will get a little bit droopy when things get really, really hot outside. And then as I was saying, this whole thing would drift up this hill where nothing's really growing anyways because of the lack of light. I would go all the way up and then kind of swoop around under that tree. I've seen these planted on hills before where they just kind of let them grow up a shady hill and it looks so cool. That's something that'll take a lot of time. It'd be many years of waiting, but if that soil up there were to get nice and amended and loosened up a little bit, I think that it would go a little bit faster and it wouldn't be hard to dig some of these up and move them around also to get them to fill that area in a little bit more quickly. So it's just an idea I've had. Eventually these will go up and I'll let them fill up the hill because they'll pretty much kind of stay where the shade is if they move too far out into the sun then they'll cook. So they'll be somewhat controlled in that sense, which I think is kind of fun. And the laurels, these are skip laurels. Laurelus skipensis is the name on these. I planted these last year and talked about them in the last garden tour and they were just starting to bud. And now they're just starting to flower. The flowers are, well, maybe they're not. Okay, some of the flowers have opened, but for a lot of them, it's still just buds, but it's pretty. And the pollinators have been enjoying it, not so much since the temperatures have cooled off, but when it was warmer, when we had that little warm spell for about a week, there were just bees everywhere over here. They love these flowers. It reminds me a lot of like the sweet spires, which I would like to plant some this year. Proven Winters has one that's called Scentlandia. And I was thinking that those would look nice kind of planted over here in front of these arborvitaes because they can take the sun or the shade. They flower heavily, at least during the like mid spring time, mid to late spring. And the flowers look kind of similar to this sort of, but they smell absolutely phenomenal. They smell so sweet. They're very hearty and the pollinators love them. And because they're versatile, they can take the sun or the shade and boggy conditions, which is what the soil is over there. It doesn't drain that well. 
I've been adding to it over the years, but those things take time. I think that uh, Sweet Spires would do well over there. And that's kind of would tie things in a little bit with this laurel head. Get these fun upright white flower stalks on them. And then uh, once these are done blooming, just about probably three and a half weeks to a month later, then the Sweet Spires would be blooming right next to them. So it would kind of keep that flow over here. And then the scent and the food for the pollinators. Ostrich ferns, those are coming up. Not as many of them are coming up as I had hoped, though I did notice some of the spots where I had them planted. There's a lot of digging around them, so that may have something to do with the squirrels. I don't know what that's about, because the these are edible, and the fiddleheads, when they start to unfurl, they look like little curly you guys, kind of like my out-of-focus hand, and they open up. That's edible. So the wildlife will eat that. People can eat it, uh, but so far there's only, I think, like three of them coming up out of the five that I planted. So it's a little bit disappointing, but it's not too late like they could still be coming up and it might just be a matter of like where the light's hitting the berm over here so i'm not like horribly concerned about it and i have two more i have two extras these are the varieties called the king they're supposed to get larger because the idea here was that those ostrich ferns these long fronds would come up above everything as far as will come up above the pedicits that are here and then have a, kind of a contrast with the lighter green foliage against the dark green foliage of the laurels that are over here and uh, maybe they'll get bigger. I think the thing with the king, that's the variety of ostrich fern, is more about the fertile fronds, which come up in the late summer into fall, that those are supposed to be really tall, and the fertile fronds are not very attractive. It just looks kind of like a big brown dead fern frond stick. So if that's the case, I'll be somewhat disappointed. It's just the information online's all over the place because people are trying to sell them, and sometimes that unfortunately leads to dishonesty about the plants. So a lot of it talks about how get these king, the ostrich fern, the king, they get seven feet tall. And like from most of the stuff I've looked at, that seems to just be a lie. The fertile fronds might get that big, but I don't know about the regular fronds. So we'll find out maybe not this year, but next year, you know, it takes them a few years sometimes to get their vigor on. But I mean, they're already pretty big considering they were just planted last year. Well, that was, that's just spent way too long talking about those ferns. But anyways, my, the thing I'm the most excited about out here right now is actually the pedicets, which is probably what I was most excited about in the last garden tour too, because there's just something so fun about them. Had they come up with that fun kind of tropical foliage, I would call these like a pothos dupe for sure. I mean, for when you see a pothos when they're running across the ground, getting ready to climb up a tree, it just looks neat how they'll fill in the spot. And that variegation is just so beautiful. I love the way the light dapples through the, well, I was gonna say the leaves. There aren't any leaves on this guy yet. This is a mimosa. They don't start to push out buds until it gets pretty warm outside and has to be consistently warm for a long time. But it was a mild winter. I have no reason to think that it wouldn't have survived the winter. It's just, it's still sleeping. Just like with the Rose of Sharon, you know, those are plants that, that's the Hibiscus Syracuse. They take a while. But like I said, as soon as it warms up enough, it'll pop out some leaves, hopefully give us some flowers this year and look really pretty. Although it does need a very heavy pruning, which isn't great because they bloom on old wood. So uh, I may wait to do the pruning until after they bloom, but that's <laughs> also like midsummer, which isn't really the best time to do the pruning. Ah, I'll think about that one for a little bit. I was really hoping this would be in bloom in time for the garden tour, but it's just not quite there yet. This is a red buckeye. I talked about this in the last video. I love the foliage. It's very shuffler like I call it another like tropical plant dupe, but it's not. It's a native. The pollinators absolutely love the flowers on them. When these open, they'll be a, a, a more of a bright, bright red. I know they're hard to see. I'm sorry. The lighting is just very harsh today. The angle of the sun's really weird and the air's weird. Things are just, everything's weird, but it's okay. I'm going with the flow, but I'll make sure to get some pictures posted online when these do start to kind of color up and do their thing a little bit better. There we go, now you can see it. Now that I'm pretty much done talking about it, I'll make sure to keep everybody posted. And actually this whole area over here, I'm going to be doing a lot of work on in this weekend's vlog that comes out a video or two after this one, because I need to come in here. There's like brush honeysuckle and stuff coming through from the neighbor's yard and just the whole area needs to be tidied. I need to get this honeysuckle cut back. I mean, it's getting ready to bloom. So I really don't want to. It has the prettiest flowers. The variety is called Major Wheeler. Major Wheelie, I can't, Major Wheeler. And uh, they're so pretty, but uh, it's just, you can see this isn't working. That's not going to work. So this is gonna come down. It's just gonna get a cut back. I'm gonna reinforce the trellis and get them trained up that trellis. You can kind of see the flower buds on here. Let me see if I can just step over my Toby real quick and I can show it to you. Well, it hasn't opened yet, so you can't really tell how pretty the flowers are. 
it just kind of looks like a regular honeysuckle bloom, but they stay a very, very, very vibrant pink. It's my favorite variety of honeysuckle. Here's a better example, kind of, still. Not the same, it's not open, but things are happening really fast. It's that time of year, so there will be updates in future videos. Like I said, the vlogs, I'm gonna be doing a lot over here, getting this area tidied up. And you can see I need to reinforce this trellis. That This was $25 off of Amazon. And it's the only trellis I was able to find that's wide enough to span the staircase here. They make them that are wide enough. Uh, there are plenty of people who do, but there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I was like, I'm not doing that. $25 off Amazon, sure, I'll give it a try, but I need to put some stakes in the ground and get it to, um, you know, I mean, that looks, that looks terrible. We'll, we'll work on that in the vlog. The spring growth coming up out of the Lespedeza here. This is a beautiful plant that comes up. It dies back every year. I was really good this fall about cutting everything back and so I wouldn't have to do it this spring. This is the one plant I forgot to do it with. Kind of like a, um, what's it called? A butterfly bush where if you live like south of or north of zone seven, you really just cut them back to the ground because the wood doesn't usually survive the winters. These, they don't do that period. They always bloom on new growth and new growth comes up out of the ground. So that's the plant where I'll go ahead, give it a nice cut back and let that new growth start to come out and over the edge here and gets covered in those beautiful pink flowers. The pollinators love it. So I need to contact someone about getting a new tree replanted up here. It's hard to do because this wall's here and I don't really know how I'm gonna get it done, but I'm gonna figure something out. These queen palms almost died. These are the two that got frozen to my driveway last year when it just got horribly cold out of absolutely nowhere. And I wasn't around, I wasn't home, I was gone. I wasn't gonna bring them in. So they sat out for like eight hours at 13 degrees with ice and snow on them. I thought they were goners, but I kept treating them with a copper-based fungicide and neem, and then just started fertilizing them like crazy when it got warm enough to bring them outside and uh, new growth. I mean, they don't look great, but they're alive. That's the main thing is you just want to see new growth. You want to see the spears push out and then keep treating them with the fungicide as long as temperatures are fluctuating a lot between warm and cool and uh, they're going to be okay. It's going to take them a few months to bounce back and look pretty again, but hey, they're alive and I'm not complaining about that. And 13 degrees, that's fint. I mean, it was only for a few hours, but still. I mean, I'm surprised that they survived, period. And the magnolia planter's looking good. This was in a video a few weeks ago. I put a hookra silver, or <laughs> hookra cinnamon dolce silver gumdrop over here. Silver gumdrop, you know what I'm talking about. And then one of the uh, peach berry orange ices back here, I think is what its variety was. And they were just teeny tiny little things and they've really popped up. They're doing their thing. The primulas are enjoying the cooler weather, and so are the alyssum. They're doing really well. When we had that heat spell that came out of nowhere, it actually kind of shocked them, which I was a little bit concerned about, but they have rebounded just fine from that. It went from being like in the 50s and 60s and lower 70s every day to uh, 89 and 91 for a few days, and it was just, it was a bit much. It was rather drastic, but they are fairly heat tolerant as long as their sun's not too strong. They smell so good, which isn't really a surprise, right? I mean, Alyssum lobularis smells really fantastic. I wasn't totally certain about the purple in here just because anytime I've tried to grow the purple varieties of Alyssum, they never do as well for me as the white ones, but this is doing really well. And it's not fully purple. You can see there's still plenty of white in here on a lot of the flowers, but that's okay. I still, I like the combination and the contrast between everything. I think it's really cute. The Magnolia. Yeah, this is the Bracken's Brown Beauty, and I talked about when I did the video with this planter about, you know, it has some winter damage, which happens, especially when it's potted. I didn't give it a prune because it had, it kind of has, lots of buds along this stem here, along this trunk. Can you see it? Kind of? Well, since repotting it, which I thought this might happen, it has kind of backed off on pushing out the new growth. So I'm still going to give it a few weeks and see if it will push it out. If not, then I'm gonna go ahead and top this off and get it to flush back out from below. I might actually do that anyways, just to get it to fill back out and look a little bit nicer. But this happens, especially when you're growing a little bit out of the zone. These are hardy to zone six, but it's potted. So you lose a couple zones of hardiness there. Things are more exposed. So having some leaf burn like this, not that shocking happens on any magnolia evergreen I've ever grown out here. They'll drop them and new ones come out, they'll flush back out, it's okay. But it's just the new buds that I was watching in there, those don't really seem to be doing anything. That's all right though. Anyone remember this planter? I did this last fall. I potted this up with some uh, brilliant autumn ferns around the edges, some ivy, which didn't, didn't really do great this winter, but I'm not shocked about that. And then I think the name of this was, it was like some kind of false 
Chinese hydrangea vine, one I hadn't grown before. And uh, the thing that appealed to me with this was that it was beautiful. It's not the same as a regular hydrangea vine. It's like a different naming and plant. If I can remember, I'll look it up in the other video. I'll put it up here on the screen or down below in the description. But the selling point for me with this was that it was supposed to be evergreen. Now, I questioned that. I wasn't certain about it. I was like, that seems like it might be a lie. Like, you're trying to get people to buy this and not differentiating the zones and how things can vary. And uh, no, zone six in a very, we had an extremely mild winter despite that 13 degrees that I was talking about with the queen palms, but that was actually in the fall. It wasn't in the winter. Fall was actually worse here than winter was, but still, uh, no. Certainly not evergreen, not one bit. I mean, it's in a pot, so you lose some of its hardiness there, right? That's normal, but uh, still. The no foliage survived in this at all, but it did start to flush back out from down below. And there's still a little bit of flexibility and give to some of the growth down lower, but the stuff up top, Nah, I mean, it's just dead. So that needs a cut back. The plant's not dead, but it was like, this isn't anywhere near as hardy as the tag described. That happens sometimes. It's why we grow things and experiment with them. The autumn ferns, they are going through their little winter to spring transition. This happens with them, at least for me, every year when I grow them in a pot. They tend to remain mostly evergreen during the winter time. And then as conditions change, sometimes their winter foliage will start to kind of burn off. I think it's just a change and like a little bit of a shock from the climate change. It's no longer winter. The angle of the sun's changing, the precipitation's changing, humidity, all that stuff. And uh, so I just go through and I'll clean most of that out. I'm trying to keep it watered. It is pretty moist in there, so it doesn't need a watering. I did move it into a bit more of a heavy shade. This did get a decent amount of sun during the winter time because it was under a tree that defoliates, but that's okay. I had it kind of near a wall where it was shaded in the afternoon. But with that heat I talked about that showed up last week where it was really, really toasty, after being pretty reasonably cool and uh, more mild outside, it didn't really appreciate that kind of a change. It's a bit shocking to it, but it's it'll be okay. It's not that big of a deal. These rebound fairly quickly. Autumn Brilliance ferns are really tough ferns. Semi-evergreen in zone six, and they have gorgeous glossy foliage. You just have to take my word for it. They're really pretty. The, maybe not right now, but typically really pretty plants. Spring planters still out here, looking good. That's only a few days old, so there's really not much of an update to give with that one. The mule palm's still good. Still just being a mule palm, you know? It's These are tough. There's not much to report on. It's the time of year where those aren't growing very much. Over here, all the annuals and perennials, there's a little bit more to say with those. And then the veggie garden down here, there's some action, not much. See, I still need to do some pruning and cutbacks. I've kind of, with my spring maintenance, worked my way around the yard, and this is the last section. I haven't gotten to it yet. But the treasure berry, buried treasure strawberries, those stayed green almost all winter. At least half of them did. Each one of these planters had two in them, and one from each survived the winter, which is fine. Whatever. I don't care. There are violas that reseeded from a planter that was above them on this wall that are showing up in there. This is going to have a decent amount of lettuce in it during the cool season, and then tomatoes and peppers and those sorts, pretty much the same thing as last year. Just, it's not time yet to even mess with those. I still need a little bit of time. I need to kind of refresh their soil and whatnot. Hydrangea vine over here, like a true hydrangea vine. This is the Miranda is its name. This is also might go over on the fence in that corner where I was talking about if I don't decide to put the viburnum there. Or it might even go on it still. They're a little bit more tolerant with the fluctuating light levels that will happen over there and it, I think it'll kind of fill in that corner a bit more nicely and as far as the vines go the hydrangea vines are usually at least in my zone a little bit more easy to control so I don't have to worry about it crawling through the fence and through my neighbor's yard at least not too terribly much. Hostas are all popping up down here. These are going to go kind of along a pathway that that I have in a shady area. I'll be sure to do a video on that when I do that. And the hookahs are looking great. They overwintered just beautifully. The hostas pretty much always do. They're really tough. I just throw some frost cloth over all of my perennials that are still in pots during the winter time. Make sure to get them splashed with some water at least once a month and they usually pull through no problem. Annuals over here just being annuals. I'm gonna get this lettuce planted up here pretty soon. It's time. They're done being in those six packs. I need to get those potted up. The bacopas and everything else over here just kind of chilling and waiting to get planted, which I'm really excited about. In a few days, it'll be warm enough to get moving with that. I was thinking about actually taking these hookahs and potting them up under my windmill palms. That's not windmill palm. Here's a windmill palm. They have nice color to them. I have two of them that are in these brown, kind of chocolatey brown planters. The other one's 
back here. It's kind of hidden by everything, but that would be, I think, a nice perennial with some good color to it and a nice texture. You know, they have those nice big bold leaves on them. I think that that would look really pretty in those, but I don't really have the quantity to make any pattern look quite right. Like there's one of those Primo Peachberry orange ices right here. Is that even what it's called? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, peach berry ice, that's what the tag says. And then there's one that's called like cherry something or other, and then the uh, cinnamon dolce gumdrop over here on the side. So I don't even have the right quantities for that. Oh, and there's one that's called like guacamole back here. So I would need to do a little bit more planning with that to get the pattern laid out right, since I basically just have one of each. It just wouldn't really look right, unless I had the same ones to go in each one. But that was just a thought, otherwise they'll be going into the garden beds, which is fine. I want to get more perennials in the garden beds anyways. Could divide them up. Some of them are big enough and have enough growth on them. You know, I divided one up when I did that magnolia planter, so I could do that again. It would be just fine. It's just one of those things where I'm just kind of sitting around thinking about it, because getting new plants is going to be probably more of a challenge this year. So I think it would be best to work with what I have here, divide things up and go from that direction before trying to get more, right? Because I don't, who knows if I'll be able to. I'm trying to not go out. The nurseries aren't even open. One of them is, maybe two of them are, but um, I'm still avoiding going out in public just to be safe for right now. We don't know what's gonna happen next month or the month after that. That's why I said it's more of my garden aspirations as opposed to plans. Cause you know, can't really make plans right now. We're not really in that kind of a place. But I am very much enjoying this fun little sea of color over here. I have these guys all put together in organized so that's just a little bit easier to water. I do have some more perennials over in another spot that are perennials that don't want a lot of water. So that's just to save them from myself and my heavy handed watering so that I don't drown them out. Uh, but there's really nothing to see. It's mostly just sticks that have like tiny buds on them. It's the, um, well, I can go show you. Yeah, see, not much to look at. These are just Asclepius tuberosas, the uh, orange butterfly weeds. They also come in yellow. It's a perennial, it's a native, but they don't like to get tons and tons of water. So I thought I would kind of leave them over here in this corner where I won't be tempted to water them too much while I'm waiting for them to go ahead and pop open. I was going to talk about these in last weekend's vlog, but I decided not to because they hadn't shown any growth yet. And I was worried that they had died, but they're coming up except for if there's one back there that's not, but the rest of them are showing growth. I didn't end up planting these last year because I have noticed with the tuberosa, with this particular Sclipius, that they have very delicate roots and I didn't want to put it in the ground during the heat of summer. And then in the fall, it just still didn't feel right because we had a really wacky fall with temperatures. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to roll the dice. I think that the odds of them surviving will be a little bit better if I wait to plant them until we get to about mid-spring when temperatures are a little bit warmer and they've rooted out and they're not going to go through any shocking temperatures and stuff like that. So that's their story. There's a beautiful stone crop here in front of everything. What's your name? Tricolor sedum over here in front of everything. It's starting to flush out, losing a little bit of variegation, but they do that. I can cut that off. Not that big of a deal. I have a little boot planter. I'm going to try and put those in. I'll probably, if I can remember, I'll get that done in this weekend's vlog. <laughs> over here, there's a fall planter that I left out because it had, I did this one with a combination of perennials and annuals. So this variegated helianthus, it's a little sunflower that's coming back and looking beautiful. I love the foliage on this. Isn't that gorgeous foliage? It's really pretty. And then, um, I don't remember what that is. But it's coming back, which is great. When these get a little bit bigger, I'm going to pull these from this and probably put them into the cutting garden or the pollinator garden. Uh, I saved most of my tags here. I try and kind of tuck them down into the planter so I can remember to reference them for videos and just to remember what they even are. But uh, the, the perennials don't have their tags on them. So I don't really remember what this even is over here, but I remember this. This is that variegated helianthus. So in a few weeks, this will get a little bit bigger. Its roots will be a little bit stronger and I can pull this out and then get this pumpkin off my patio because it's really, it doesn't make sense to have that out here anymore. And the same thing with this planter over here. This was another planter that was in a fall video where there's some ivy coming over the front. And then I believe these were various days. No, they weren't days. I don't, guys, I don't remember what's in these planters. Uh, it was one of the fall planters. I'll link it down below and put it up on the screen. But everything that was in here is coming back, at least to my knowledge. There's like one little thing in here that doesn't look like it's bouncing back quite yet. But this was a sea oat right here that's coming up. And I remember what these are. I just don't remember what they're called. You know what I mean? Like I can see them in my head. 
I've grown them before. They're lovely plants, but I just don't remember the name. I think it's nice. It's nice to have some perennial planters around. Now, I will put these someplace during the summertime where it's not like something you can see. Then move it back out late summer into fall and maybe pop some mums in there with it or something like that. It's not really my summer aesthetic, but it will be nice to just be able to pull it out and have that fall decor without having to do much. I'm happy about that. I may go through here. I need to do a little bit of cleaning in here and pull some of this old stuff out and it probably drop some fresh soil in there. Some kind of soil amendment, something to freshen it up, but so far it's doing okay just left untouched, which was the point of this planter was that everything I put in here were drought tolerant, really tough plants. I mean, even the ivy is a plant where if you have it in the right location, just leave it alone, it's gonna be fine. And uh, so far it's holding up to that. It's doing really well. Yep, look what I found here. I always hold on to these just to be safe. I don't know where the one for the helianthus went, but this is the uh, Mariachi Bandera Hellenium. That is one of these guys that's in the back here. So how does it matter when you can't even see the flowers? Does anybody care? And then there should be a little lemon goldenrod in this too, one of those that actually it might be in the other plant where we talked about the sea oats and then that plant that I just was playing with in the front that looks like it didn't come through. I'm thinking it's probably the little bang at Red Elf Coreopsis, which is unfortunate because I was excited about that. I thought it was a really cute plant, but it maybe just hasn't come up yet. You know, it's still a little bit early, kind of. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, and there's one little flower on the oleander back here. You can come over here for a better shot. It's got some buds on it, and uh, this is my favorite oleander, not one I would expect to be blooming this time of year. The variety is either Maui Sunrise or Malibu Sunrise. I can't remember. I've had this one for several years, and it like does not exist online. I can't find pictures of it anywhere. I was able to at one point when I that's when I remembered it was either Maui Sunrise or Malibu Sunrise, but I, I'm thinking that that might be because it has a really horrible growth shape to it but the flowers are stunning i think it's the prettiest oleander i've ever seen even though the growth habit's pretty wonky and this is a flower that's opened up and had to deal with bad temperatures and weird fluctuations and it's still absolutely beautiful tiny little toxic plumerias just love them it has more buds on it i'm actually not even sure why i have this over here this should be in more sun why did i put this here i have no idea i have my lemon coral sedums that are left over from last year over here they're starting to bounce up and i was thinking like okay these are going to want the same watering basically but this is very shady i'll probably move this over into the sun here fairly soon but as far as everything else goes out here i'm just kind of in the like sitting back and planning you know more kind of daydreaming about what to do in the garden this year this whole area might be different this year i haven't decided yet i have these two big blue pots beautiful pots i love these pots i don't ever put anything in these that need to be moved inside because they are incredibly heavy those are they're roughly 30 inches across the top on those very heavy pots so i usually just pop my tropicals inside of them in their containers and then lift them back out but last year the uh, plants that i had over here the sunlight it's just not as good as it used to be these pine trees they're starting to overhang the patio and what happened was all of those plants started to kind of lean forward and it just didn't look nice i really wasn't into how it looked and uh, the main reason i even have them here is for privacy i used to actually have these trellises back here in these pots i had one in each pot this normally there's an adenidia palm that goes here during the summertime and i would put mandevillas in the back mandevillas mandevillas whatever you want to call them and it was beautiful but there's not enough sun over here anymore for those there are more shade loving vines but i don't know if that's something that i would even really want to mess with when if the, i would want bountiful flowers so uh, an idea i have been toying with i'm not sold on it yet but i'm thinking since i have these two big blue pots here and I have two big hydrangea trees that I just showed a little while ago over there where that arbor, the trellis was all wonky, and then the honeysuckle, that area. Those both need to be repotted very badly. And this would be a good upgrade. I could keep them in these pots for several years, really. And that just makes more sense than trying to find new pots to pot those up into. Now, in a dream world, what I have always wanted to do over there was to take a couple of these pots. This is my favorite pot that I have ever had. It's just a big, beautiful, gorgeous aqua pineapple, but this isn't big enough. There's a size up from this pot that is roughly the same size as these big pool pots. These are, I think they're 32 inches high by 24 wide, I think. Very big pots. Problem though, <laughs> is that 
when these pots go up to that size, the nurseries usually only get two of them in, if they'll even get them in this year, and they're like 450 bucks a piece. I don't see myself doing that. I can't spend nearly a thousand dollars on a couple of pots, even if they're absolutely gorgeous, and these would be perfect. Imagine these bigger than this, framing a walkway with those hydrangea trees. Oh, so pretty, but no, nah, I don't I don't see that happening. If it does happen, someone go ahead and reach through the screen and just slap me and call me stupid because that's too much money to be spending on pottery. But, I mean, I could find a deal, I don't know. But I, what I'm saying is I think it would make more sense to use these big blue pots down over there for those hib hibiscus, no, hydrangea trees. But that would leave this area bare, except for the palm tree I'll do. You know, I can rearrange the area, make it look nice. And if I do that, then instead of having plants over here, which might be a nice change, it might be nice to have this area more clean and tidy on the patio as far as that goes. And then I could plant up this area on the hill, which is something I've thought about doing for a long time. It's very shady over here. I have like some old broken pottery that I <laughs> don't want to part with. So I just threw it up here. I'll do something else with that. And uh, you know, I could put shrubbery in the back, evergreen shrubbery and bring things forward and have lots of flowers and mostly things that are white, I would think, because that's going to light up the most at nighttime. And this is an area where people sit outside at night. I could do like a row of caladiums kind of close to the front with some impatience in front of that. And then something that will come and trail over this wall. I'll put that socket box and obviously I would completely, totally clean this area up first. So the view would be more like a little planted shade garden up here with all my orchids and things hanging above everything. I don't know, just a thought, but again, it, that would all depend on availability of plants and being able to get them. Who knows what's going to happen this year? May not be able to go to the nurseries and get stuff. I have no idea. I have some plant orders that I'm waiting on, but that's pretty much it. I'm not putting in new orders. I don't want to deal with having to clean everything that comes in the mail right now. But it would be fun to incorporate more perennials. That was something that I was asked about and I meant to cover in my q and I did about a month ago and I just slipped my mind, but it was when I was talking about the laurel hedge. Let's go back down there. But when I planted up this entire laurel hedge over here, that was supposed to be like a kicking off point to start getting more evergreens into the garden. I really like evergreen interest. It just makes things so much more bearable during the winter time. Uh, but you know, you have to step through those things slowly because these, it's expensive. P perennials are very expensive. Tropicals are too, but perennials much more as they should be rightfully so they take longer to grow and you get more out of them whole point though being is that i have all this garden area over here and i think that it would be nice to work more evergreen shrubs into everything so that hedge was supposed to be kind of like the jumping off point for that last year and then i had plans for what i wanted to do over against the house and those garden beds for this year but again who knows what's going to happen kind of a waiting game we will see i have several needle palms that i'm going to work into the landscape around here and some sable miners which will be somewhat evergreen. I'll probably have to cover those up if things get too bad, but this whole area used to be full of perennials and evergreens, and I would tuck impatience into them every year. And uh, my tropicals that are in the garage, I work those into the landscaping too. But as the sun changed, the sun didn't change. That doesn't happen. It's not within our lifetimes. But what I mean is that as the trees grew, the sun went away, and then over the years, all of those perennials slowly started to die off because they weren't getting the light that they needed anymore. And it's time to start fixing that and replanting it. Hello, oh, palm tree, how are you? But see, the problem is I'm still such a sucker for the tropicals. Anyways, yes, the point was that was a question about working more evergreens into the garden, and that is something I'm working on. Who knows how far that's going to go this year? I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. And here's some of those needle palms. These were actually in videos last year. Some of them didn't hold up that great this winter. Some of them, dead so you know a little bit of differences there they're not dead though i've been treating them like that one back there it looks really bad but it's still the spear that's in the middle is still nice and sturdy so it's going to be okay just had some bad reaction to some wind i'm thinking there it was covered but i mean so is this one i don't know they're fine oh and down here is a better example of my larger needle palms these are old they're very big probably a good three and a half feet tall didn't need any protection this winter. Very little dieback or burn on them, just a little bit down there. But this is what it would be. Just like they have a leaf shape that's pretty similar to like a lady palm, but they're hardy, very hardy all the way into zone six, even zone five in a sheltered location. And they're nice. It's nice to have evergreens that don't all look just like a typical evergreen. I like broadleaf evergreens. That's my jam. And that's what I would like to incorporate the most into the yard. And I have a little sable palmetto back here too, that is just, I mean, not much to look at. <laughs> I've had this thing for like 10 years and it was a strap leaf and now it's starting to actually put out palmitate fronds. So that's exciting. No protection this winter, did fine. 
but again, a very mild winter. I like a lot of variation with my evergreen. Things like different types of yucca, yucca, depending on if you're talking culinary or gardening or where you're from. I usually say yucca, <laughs> but I say yucca when I'm talking about cooking. Doesn't It doesn't matter, it's all the same. Evergreen, different type of interest to them. Various hollies, camellias, acuba japonicas. I've, I've grown before and they were great, but we had one really bad winter that just took them all out where it got down to like minus 13. That was a few years ago and I lost them all, but typically that doesn't happen here. There are a lot of different leaf shapes and colors and textures to work with, which I'm excited about, but I don't know how much it's gonna happen this year. I'm hopeful, but everything just is what it is. I'm happy to have my health and to be able to get outside and play with what I have. I'm not pushing things. It's, I'm happy with the way things are and there's plenty to work with without having to go and start all kinds of other big projects. Hey, Cardinal. Bye, Cardinal. Okay, well, that's everything. I have officially talked myself to the point of barely having a voice anymore. So I hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. I love hearing from everybody. What's everybody up to with their houseplants and in their gardens? I, uh, well, you know, I just spent who knows how long telling you about it. In a couple weeks' time, things are going to be pretty different out here. Just waiting for this last, hopefully the last cold front to go ahead and move its way on out of here. And then I can start cleaning up the beds a little bit more. By that, I mean pulling the mulch off those bananas and things I just showed you. And uh, start getting to work with some more of the annuals and getting them worked into planters and... I'm excited. I'm very, very excited and happy about being outside and getting to do things with the plants. I'd be happy, period, just to be able to be outside. It's actually pretty cold right now. It's like 43. Um, so I'm surprised I actually stayed out here as long as I did because I, a couple days in the 80s and lower 90s, you turn into a big wimp with temperatures in the 40s. But surprisingly, it's not terrible. The air is nice and fresh. The sky, did you see the sky? Look at it. It's the sky got the clouds and it's looking pretty. I love clouds. They make me so happy. Yeah, like I said, comment down below. I hope everybody's doing well. You know, the whole YouTube thing, it's all down there. I appreciate it. it helps the channel a lot. So thank you for that. And uh, of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.